at the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. We're right outside of our given habitat, ready to celebrate Eddie and Kaden's milestone birthdays. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let the zookeepers know we are ready for them to get all their awesome presents and cards. We're gonna ask them to let them out. So let's see how they enjoy it. You can see here, we had zookeepers here that love our given so much. They packaged up all these awesome presents for them with some birthday cake in there, um, made out of monkey biscuits and other yummy things like raisins. Um, we had guests come to the zoo this weekend and fill out some fun birthday cards for them. And uh, you can see that awesome banner there. So thank you to Danny, Caitlin, and Savannah, our keepers here that worked so hard to put that up. And then also to Jamie and Ashley, the keepers today that spent so much time putting that around there. Let's see who our first given out here is to come and explore. It looks like we have Holmes here. He's actually our three-year-old given. And up in the corner there we have Gibson and they're coming out to explore right away, which makes sense. There are our younger gibbons here. And then right here's our 40-year-old Eddie. He just turned 40 on Sunday. And right up top there is Cajun coming down. Today is her birthday and she's 30 years old. And if you look very closely, you can see our youngest new addition to the family. Uh, we actually don't know if it's a boy or girl yet and won't know for quite a while because uh, Cajun is doing a really good job of taking care of that baby and keeping it so close. But it was just born July 18th, so very new member to the family. And uh, if, we, if we look down there, you can see Gibson already came over and started exploring inside those packages. Now a birthday cake for a Gibbon is a lot different than a birthday cake for us. We do try to make some healthy cakes sometimes, so we do keep it low on the sugar for our Gibbons. So you'll see they, they normally get a pellet with their diet called a monkey biscuit. And even though they get lots of fruits and veggies and other healthy things, this formulated food item helps them make sure they get all of the supplements and vitamins that they need every day. So they crush that up. They put some yummy cinnamon in there. Oh, look, it's raining birthday cards. <laughs> they, um, they put some raisins in there, fun things they love to eat. And so that's what they're gonna find in their presents in there today. And you can see they're already coming down to explore. And <laughs> you can see the baby's probably just gonna peek his head in there. He has started to try to taste some different types of food items the Gibbons are getting, but it's still gonna be a few months till he starts regularly eating some of the fruits and veggies that they like to eat. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sibling interaction here, just like our families at home. You can see some of the siblings kind of playing and maybe trying to compete over some different fun things to eat. And over there, we have our youngest blonde Gibbon. His name is Kusa. He just had his year birthday and a big thanks to Campus USA Credit Union. They donated money and they won a naming contest to name him Kusa, um, which really, really suits him. And he's very playful. This <laughs> case, she got a full slice of cake and uh, she wants to make sure no one's going to take that from her, so she took that all the way across the habitat there. Now, Eddie has been here since 1982, which is amazing. So he's been here almost his entire life. He was introduced to Cajun in 2003, and um, they've been pretty inseparable ever since. What's really cool about white-handed gibbons, they are a type of ape. They're considered a lesser ape. We often see our guests get so excited about the monkeys here at the zoo. And while we do have so many types of monkeys, um, we have capuchin monkeys and squirrel monkeys. Um, these guys are closer related to orangutans, um, chimpanzees, and gorillas because they are apes, but they are considered a lesser ape. And you can tell they're an ape because they don't have a tail. Um, and that's one of the easiest ways you can tell just by looking. And they, another thing that makes them really special is they're also one of the only higher primate species where they live in a bonded pair with a family. So Eddie and Cajun, like their wild counterparts, are living together as a couple. And in, the, in their native range in Southeast Asia, you'd see them in a family just like this, where they could have up to four of their kids living with them at any time. And they're learning how to be good parents from their amazing parents. Eddie and Cajun are incredible parents to all the kids they've had here at the zoo. 
um, they've had six. And so um, right now they have four in here and we've actually, this is kind of historical for us, for them to have four at one time. Our newest baby was a little bit of a surprise because Cajun's very regular about her baby. She regularly has had them since 2010, every two to three years. But um, we got a little surprise baby in under a year after Cuso was born, which is pretty cool. And um, that's kind of offered us an opportunity to see some behaviors that we've never had an opportunity to see. Um, Cajun's having to nurse two babies at one time. And so some things that we'll see is that she's checking herself to make sure that she has enough milk for both babies. She does allow them both to nurse at the same time. But luckily, Cusa is old enough, as you can see there, to steal food from his brothers. Um, so he is eating lots of solid food and he's still getting that milk. And he'll even try to continue to have that milk until he's about two years old. And I've seen some of the older boys try even into their threes, because why not? But now that there's lots of competition, we'll probably see that happen around a year and a half to two years that he'll be mostly on solid food. Now, you've probably noticed how they're moving around with their arms. Gibbons have a very special way of moving called brachiation. They spend about 90% of their locomotion doing that movement. And it will take the babies usually up to nine months for them to get pretty skilled at it. And um, you've probably, if you've been visiting us regularly, might even see the newest infant trying his hand at some of the lower bamboo of just using his little skinny muscle arms um, to hold himself up. But Cusa there at a year, you can see he's really getting the hang of it. Um, no pun intended. And moving all the way around there. And what's really neat, if you look at them, they have five fingers and toes just like us, but they look so different. And if you get a chance to see how they're eating their cake, you might get to see those neat adaptations they have. Their toes and their thumbs are actually oriented really far down on their hand, and they've got these really long, elongated toes and fingers, and that helps them really easily swing through the trees. They also have um, a different type of wrist than we do. They have a ball and, um, ball and joint socket, and so they actually can rotate it around really easily. It takes a lot of pressure off their, their arms and their shoulders. Look at that. We've got a juggler in our midst over here. <laughs> it's really cute to see how they manipulate things with their hands. And here's here's the star of the show, Eddie. You, he is always out front and center. Whoop! Of course, Cusa has to start raining on the party. There we go. <laughs> if you've visited us over the last 40 years, you probably know Eddie because he is always front and center, and he's always calling like he is right now so he's starting to make a little call the males are territorial and he's letting us all know this is his house and this is where his family lives although he is not the dominant one in here they they're equal partners although i'd argue that cajun um, is probably in charge the most and she is an amazing parent you'll see when her babies are really young they stay really close but she's really great about letting them be independent and just keeps a watchful eye on them and comes to the rescue whenever needed um, but she's, she's really, really amazing in that way. And Eddie does a really great job entertaining all the boys while she's trying to take care of the little ones so that they don't constantly come over and interrupt their bonding time. Well, I can talk all day about these guys, but if you have any questions, we'd love to hear about them. Um, there's endless things to talk about our family here at the zoo. So we'd love to hear if you're curious about anything that you're seeing, things that they're interacting, things you've always wondered about them when you visited them at the zoo. Look how they're moving around there. We might get lucky enough to hear Cajun and Eddie sing their duet. Every single day, even though we hear Eddie call and do, I call it his Dory Whale song all day long. Um, it's a little less, melodious than Cajun's beautiful call. They will sing, <laughs> they will sing a duet every single day that's prompted by Eddie and then Cajun will join in and uh, it can be heard up to a kilometer away. So our students at the main campus regularly let us know that they are hearing some really interesting sounds at the zoo and that's usually Cajun calling all the way out there. And scientists believe they're using that to let everybody know where their territory is but also they believe it could help strengthen the bond of the pair, which is really, really neat to think that they sing a duet every day for that. And you 
probably noticed when you visit, these are some of our, some really active animals. They're actually, um, of the, the gibbon species, they're one of the most active. And so they're gonna be brachiating all over. They're gonna be interacting in their social group, their family they have right here. Um, so when you come to the zoo, um, you're sure to see them moving around. Even if you get to see them take a nap, it is so adorable. Cajun likes to lay out on the lawn and stretch out her arms and um, show off her baby. So even when they're sleeping, there's lots to see. <laughs> If you come by today, uh, we're open until three. I'm sure you're gonna see them still interacting with all these packages. Uh, they're very, very curious. And so um, even when all the cake is gone, I'm sure they're gonna spend some time tearing and shredding. And there's lots of birthday cards for them from guests that wrote to them this weekend, hidden all over there. One of my favorites said, um, Cajun and Eddie, you are the realest parents ever. <laughs> Which I I really love it. I'm sure they're going to be excited to get that card, but they get to spend their day running around and checking out all the art and messages that our, our fam friends that visited us this weekend wrote for them. You can see right now how strong Eddie is. He's using those super long arms that he uses for brachiation. These guys are really fast. They actually can swing up to 35 miles per hour, if you can believe that, through the trees. And they also can take a big leap with those arms up to about 30 feet, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. Um, so they can, they're can they basically bench pressing their own body weight all day long. So our keepers actually never go into their habitat with them. They're always having a protected space between them, protected barrier. And so our gibbons are trained to participate in their own daily welfare and health care. So the, the keepers here have trained them to go into a building. They ask them to go there with what we call a cue. And so they will go back there, that tells, asks them to do the behavior, and when they get back there, they're reinforced, given lots of yummy things that they like to eat and things to do. Well, we can close the door and safely come in here. So our keepers were able to make this a true surprise party because we don't normally have the gibbons out here with our keepers. So they got to do this without worrying about all these arms and teeth <laughs> getting in the way. And they can make it a true surprise for the gibbons. And when it's ready to come out, they've cleaned their habitat, um, they, and they've given them their enrichment for the day. We release them out into their habitat and they get to enjoy it all day long. They can also do some other really neat behaviors. Uh, they can show us their teeth. They can open their mouth and let us look inside every day so we can make sure that their teeth are nice and healthy. They'll also present different parts of their body through the mesh here. And um, that lets us see, you know, they're having lots of little squabbles like they do in a family. And, uh, you know, we can see if they have any, any injuries or anything they might have got from playing too, too rough. They also will take medicine from a syringe. We give them grape juice or other yummy liquids that can kind of make them think of a medicine so that a syringe isn't so scary when we introduce it if they ever actually need anything like that. And Eddie here is... He's up there, he is 40 years old. In the wild, gibbons usually live around 30, even up to 40 years old, but in zoos and aquariums, we're seeing them live much longer. So Eddie's probably got a long time ahead here, um, but if he does ever need anything, he is trained to comfortably take medication, which most of us need as we get older. And many of our animals here at the zoo, if they are in their, their older geriatric years, will help them out with that. So that training is really, really helpful. <laughs> if we come over here, we might get to see uh, Cajun. I bet she gobbled up that entire slice of cake. Oh, and we can see the baby trying to explore. There we go, that lower bamboo I mentioned. He's trying to test his muscles. I don't know about you, I don't see a single muscle in there. <laughs> pretty scrawny little guy. When he was born, he just had that black hair cap on top and he was basically naked. Um, and then they start to grow a really thick, luscious fur and that really helps them in the rainforest where they're native to. If it starts raining, it can kind of wick off there. It helps keep them warm. 
So it's really, really helpful to them. I saw Cusis up there reading a card. <laughs> Please feel free to put in there any questions you're curious about these guys. Looks like we're doing some shredding up there, which is what we usually expect. <laughs> today so you can see Eddie really starting to kind of keep an eye on his territory make sure everybody knows that they're here and he's gonna protect them and that call lets everybody know oh, there's Holmes so CUSO was named um, from employees at uh, Campus USA and Holmes was actually named from a guest that came to a brew at the zoo event called um, Ken and Drew Rock the Zoo that we had a couple years ago and uh, from a silent auction and so she got an opportunity to name Holmes. <laughs> but uh, other other Gibbons have had names. Gibson was named um, at an event. <laughs> now Cajun's holding the baby's pretty silly right now. <laughs> Now these guys, it, normally they'll eat things like fruits and veggies and leaves and different kinds of plants, but they are omnivorous, even though they're mostly frugivorous, which is that they mainly eat fruits, but um, they will eat meat. So you might see them eat eggs, bugs, um, even a bird, if you can believe it, they might catch um, where they're from. So here at the zoo, we might give them some other things like eggs. <laughs> Cajun's taken off with some cake like a bandit over there. She really likes her privacy to make sure these boys don't try to steal that from her. <laughs> now look how they're constantly moving. Like I said, 90% of the time they're awake, they are moving like this. Um, and how they normally get their water. We do have some water tubs around them here at the zoo. Sometimes you might see during a rainstorm, they'll lick all the water off their fur. Um, but Cajun likes to, you might see her stick her hand in and drink water out of her fingers like it's a fine wine. She's really cute about that. Um, so every once in a while, we did see Cusa recently stick his face right in the water bowl. But usually you're gonna see them using their hands as a cup to get that water. And they'll lick it right off their fur. <laughs> and it's a little tricky to see right now, but um, Cusa is interacting with the, a card in a very funny way. He's kind of going all out on it, pouncing on it, ripping it, throwing it around. Um, so it's really interesting to see the different age groups and their different maturity levels and how they interact with the different things they're introduced to. Um, Cajun's usually a lot more methodical about things. You saw how she carefully um, observed what was around her. She carefully opened things up and lifted them. Um, she's a very cautious individual. And you can kind of see the kids, they just kind of start exploding everything. And so <laughs> you can really see that different maturity level. like everybody's starting to find their own places to maybe take a little rest before they come back for a second round. I'm checking, every <laughs> I'm checking everything out. Um, I was told recently that we're starting to see uh, Cusa spend a lot of time with Eddie as the as Cajun is you know teaching the new baby Gibbon how to be more independent. Cusa is becoming more independent also, but he is hanging next to his daddy, which is really sweet because this is the first blonde Gibbon baby that they've ever had. So it's very sweet that he he's he's attached to his daddy. It looks just like him. And you can see they will walk on their, their feet, um, but their arms are longer than their bodies. They they are actually about just under three feet tall and their but their arms are much taller than them, and so they if you see them walk around, they either have to hover their hands above the ground a little bit or completely above their head, um, which is pretty cool to see Cajun do a tightrope walk that way. She'll put her hands up above her head. Um, we have no questions. It's been 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, 
um, we'll keep the camera on for just a couple more minutes and see if there's any last minute questions coming in. Um, but we're probably going to wrap it up here in just a couple minutes because they look like, at least for now, um, they've had their fun with their party. But um, we encourage you to come by today because it's I'm sure it's not over for them. They're going to do multiple rounds of interacting with all this fun stuff. We are open every single day from 9 to 3. We sell our last tickets at 2.30. So we hope you can come by and visit all our family here at the zoo. Um, we have lots of different animals here. We are home to the Zoo Animal Technology Program. So while we are our community zoo, we're also a learning lab for zookeepers getting their associate in science in zoo animal technology. And so every zookeeper you will talk to when you visit us um, in a green shirt, they are getting their degrees in zookeeping and they're gonna go off and um, take care of animals all over the world when they graduate with us, which is pretty amazing. And so we're so grateful to our Gibbon family uh, for teaching our zookeepers how to take care of apes, um, how to take care of a family, and um, learn all the amazing different interactions that families have and, and apes and primates can have. So they, they are an amazing resource for us here at the zoo. They are an endangered species, so there's things you can do for them too. Just, even if you're not a zookeeper, you can help gibbons in the wild. You can do things like make sure that you're thinking about the types of things that you buy. They live in the trees and so many things that we consume come from trees or we have to destroy trees to make those things. So there's certain apps like the Shia Mountain Zoo's sustainable palm oil app. Um, things like that that you can download that can help you make some good choices when you go to the grocery store or go shopping this these holiday season. So you can make good choices for animals that live in rainforest. Um, and that's 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 the job of our Gibbon family here to teach you about these Gibbons, help inspire you, and hopefully help you want to help protect their wild counterparts. Oh, it looks like Cajun might be starting her call here. Maybe we'll stay on another minute or so and see if she'll. She'll do the full blown thing for you. <laughs> I absolutely love watching her run around with the baby on her tummy. Well, I think you're just going to have to come here and see it for yourself. Um, again, this is Ben Jade here at the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you learned so much about our amazing Gibbon family. And uh, got to have your own celebration for Eddie and Cajun for their 30 and 40th birthdays. We hope to see you soon. Thanks.